Hello, Nate from Usalytics, and today going to be taking you through how to create a study in the Usalytics platform. Going to be going a little bit high level, so there are some details that I'm going to skip over. If you if you do have any questions, just simply reach out to your Usalytics representative. Let's go ahead and jump in. First thing you're going to want to do is create a study by selecting the Create Study button. From here, you'll choose the team and project that you want the study to be located under. If, uh, if you do not see this team button, that is simply because you have a single team account, which just means that you only have projects available. No problem, select the team if you have that. If not, just select the project. If there are no projects available like you see here, then you'll just have to simply go create one first. So let's select a team that actually does have a project. Great, we'll go from here and we'll go ahead and create. This is going to take us to a view of what type of methodology we want to use, whether unmoderated or moderated. I'm going to be showing you unmoderated first. All right, so we jump into here, and what we want to do now is to go ahead and set up the study. Pretty self-explanatory, and everything is outlined for you. Again, going to be going through just some high-level information for you in the study creation video today. First thing is the public name. That is what your participants will see. Internal name is what your team will see in the platform. So make sure that you're putting more detailed uh, notes in the internal name. Next, you'll choose what type of asset that you want to launch the study under. Is this a prototype? Are you testing just a regular website? Or are you testing a native app? Now note, just about any URL will work with a website or a prototype button. So it doesn't necessarily have to be specific to a website. It could be a link to a video, a Google document, or something similar. Next is we have the starting point URL. This is the link or the asset that's going to open as soon as the participant joins the study. You are required to put something in here. However, if you don't want your asset to open as soon as the study starts, just select this button right here, and then this gets blanked out, and you can go ahead and put links inside of your test script or have no link at all. Next is your max session time. This is where the participant is only going to have this amount of time available, and this does affect credits if you have a usage plan which means that if you do a 60 or a 45 minute study, it will cost you more credits in order to run that study. Lastly, we have the language. Go ahead and select the language of your choice and that will change the UI of the platform. Just note that if you run the study in a separate language from English, anything you input like your screener or test script will also need to be translated by yourself. The Usalytics platform will not translate what you input. Once that's finished, let's go ahead and put a quickly a name in here and we'll go ahead and go to next. Next, we're going to choose the device type. You can only do one device type per study. If you want to run a study with multiple devices, just create them separately. So create the first one for a desktop first, then clone, and you can do your smartphone next. Choose whether or not you want the webcam in the study. If you don't want to have the webcam, maybe you're bringing your own participants. You can choose just to have their screen and audio recorded. Next, a very, very important, we choose the source of participants, whether you're going to use the Usalytics panel or you're going to bring the participant yourself. I notice that we have two types of credits if you're in a usage plan, a panel and a BYOU credit. That is what you'll use for each of these separate banks for each. Choose how many participants you want. I'm just going to select one here for now, but you can choose as many of your participants as you want in a study. You are not limited to how many participants you can run in a single study as long uh, if you're in a usage plan, as long as you have enough credits to fund that. Next, you have the different demographic filters. I'm not going to be going through them individually, but just note, fill these out as needed for your study. One tip I can give is to not fill all of these out just for the sake of filling them because they're here, because that's going to over filter your study. Essentially, how it works is any parameters you set here, only those people that fit that parameter will even be able to take your screener, which we have here in the next section. Now we have screeners. Screeners are optional. You do not have to build a screener if you want. Screeners work the same way if you're going to bring your own participants or use the Usalytics panel. The UI is very simple. Grab and drag in in order to get a blank task, or I should say a blank question that you can edit from scratch, or you can add a question here, which will also just give you a blank question. If you want to use some of our templates, just simply select, and we have some that you can choose here. Just add it in, and then you can customize from there. Any of these templates are customizable. You can change anything you'd like, including the response options. And you can even add some of your own response options as well. Great. Now, there's two types of disqualifying methodology. In a single choice, you can either advance the participant, which will just send them to the next question. You can qualify them, which means that we'll end the screener and immediately qualify them to take the study, regardless if there are more questions below. 
And then obviously reject will reject them. Participants cannot go back through the screener once they've been rejected. If you'd like, you can big build uh, skip logic into your uh, screener. Just know that it's going to be sequential skip logic. It's just going to skip them down to a specific task or activity or question that you have later. The other type is multiple choice. Multiple choice does not have skip logic because the participants can choose multiple options. A may select option means that it does not matter if they choose that option or not. They will pass if they choose that. A must select option means that they have to choose that option. So if we have more than one must select option, the participant will need to choose both one and two in order to pass this question. Lastly, we have a reject option. If they choose this option, it doesn't matter what else, what else they have chosen, they will fail this question. So if the participant wants to choose one, two, and four, they would still fail, even though they chose both of the must selects because they chose the reject option. All right, add as many response options as you want. You can randomize those as needed. If you want to anchor and say, maybe I have a none of the above anchor to the bottom, you can do that. In a multiple choice, you can select how many uh, options they can choose, whether it's unlimited, whether they have to choose a range between, let's say, one and two or three, or they need to choose an exact number. They have to choose at least, uh, or they can only choose two options and they have to choose two. If you want, you can always put an other option. That just adds a next option at the bottom uh, that you won't see up here, but it will show um, in, the, in the actual screener itself. And this just gives them an option to write in their answer and you can choose what, you know, it doesn't matter what they write in, they'll either pass or um, fail if they do that other option. This works similarly in a single choice option as well as the randomize. Okay, great. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and remove this one, but I'm gonna keep at least one in here. Okay, great. Now, again, screener is optional. If you want to use a screener you've used in the past, you can grab it from the drop down here, select and hit duplicate, and that'll give you the same exact screener as you used in a previous study, as long as that study is completed. I'm going to go ahead and remove my screener here and move on to the next. Now, in the activities, I'm going to skip a lot here just for the sake of time, but just note there's same UI you drag and drop to get a blank activity that you can build from scratch or you can select and use one of our templated options and build from there. A Couple of important things to know, you can upload images. You just select this and drag and drop your image in. Very important that it's under two megabytes and only a PNG or JPEG file. You can also launch a URL in, this, in the task, but just note that you will not be able to add a URL if you have already uploaded an images. So remove the image and go ahead and put your link in. Only one link per task, but you can have multiple tasks with different links in them later in the study. So there's no limit to how many assets that you test as long as it's only one per task or activity. Great. Now you can add in, again, customize from here as much as you want. You can add in different URLs as we've mentioned. You can change the next copy. Different questions or activity types have different follow-up things you can do, like a success-failure question or a single ease question for a specifically task verbal response. You can disable the screen recording, which means that the screen of the device the participants on will not be recorded for the entirety of the time they're on that specific task. And you can change the next button copy. Awesome, now you can technically put as many different tasks as you want in. Just note that your participant will only have the max session time to complete. So generally you don't wanna do more than one task per minute. For example, a 30 minute study, definitely no more than 30 tasks. Once we've built out our script and we're happy with it, we can go ahead and select preview. I would always encourage doing a realistic preview because this will give you the best and most realistic view of the study, but it may require you to download our app or browser extension depending on what device that the study is under. If you don't wanna do that, just simply do the study flow preview, which will keep you in the Usalytics platform and just kind of give you a general flow of how the study will work. Lastly, we're gonna do a confirmation step. You may get an error here. It's not necessarily an error, but there may be things you need to complete before you can actually launch a study, like adding a name, adding participants, making sure that you don't have any blank activities or screener questions. But once all that's good, you can actually come into here. And from here, what we can do is we'll see how, what's the cost per participant. Remember that credits equal dollars. So this is actually using $69 per participant for this study. And I can change the number of participants as well. And you can see that the credits spent uh, for the study will increase. 
You'll see how many current credits you have available either in your team or company as a whole. It will take that out of that bank and it'll show you how many you'll have remaining. Next, you'll just go to publish study or you can return to edit the study as needed. You will not see this biosensor. Don't worry about that. You'll be either be publishing the study or returning. That's all you need to know. If you have any questions, please reach out to your user Linux representative.